Hello everyone, we are here to replace the CPU, fan, and the heatsink inside of our laptop. We've got the CPU right here underneath our heatsink and our fan. This fan gets covered in dust and debris, so you want to clean out this thing for sure and possibly replace it if that fan starts to go. Also with this heatsink here, this is going to carry the heat from our CPU and be cooled by that fan. So let's get started. Our laptop is opened up, our battery is disconnected, as well as our power adapter has been removed. So we're gonna take a closer look and we're gonna zoom in, but we have six screws here regarding my CPU and my heatsink. Also, there's a screw up here that's holding this fan in place. So let's zoom in, take a closer look, and start our removal and replacement. This would be an awesome time to consult your manual for your laptop and make sure that you're following the correct steps to actually disassemble your laptop and replace or remove your CPU as well as your heatsink as well as your fan. So we're going to start off first and we're going to unplug our fan. Right here this is the power adapter for the fan that goes to the laptop. You can use any type of flat headed tool to try to pull this up. You can also try to use your fingers. Just make sure you consult your manual so you know how to remove it. For me I use a flat tool and I can pry up our power adapter for that fan. And that's the fan that's going to be utilizing air to keep this heatsink cool which will then in turn cool that CPU. So my fan is unplugged. Now what we want to do is I want to remove the screw at the top and the screw at the top is holding that fan into place. So I can go ahead and get my screwdriver in there. Mine requires a Torx screwdriver for this one. So my screwdriver is in and I'll just be able to take that screw out. The fan screw has been removed. Put that to the side. Then I have six screws here, and they are actually numbered. Those numbers are important when we're installing our heatsink and CPU, so it's a nice flush connection to that CPU, holding it in place. So I'm going to remove those screws. I'm just going to follow the numbered order of one all the way through six for each screw step by step. My six screws have all been loosened, so this time I'm going to go ahead and pick up that fan first. And this fan will unsnap out of the case. If we can take a close look at it, that is dirty and dusty. So that's one of those reasons you want to keep these things clean. Use that can of compressed air like it says in the manual for your laptop. Down below we can see this is my heat sink. I can go ahead and I can pick this up and again I'll put the dust and dirt in there. So we make sure this is kept clean as well. That's the importance of the compressed air can. If this heat sink doesn't cool, that CPU is not going to stay cool. You can see there are remnants of thermal paste as well. So we can put some new thermal paste in our laptop and do this right. Next what we're going to do is we're going to remove our CPU. We can clean this thing up and also we can install a new CPU in as well. Our CPU is right here, which was under the heat sink. So I've zoomed in, if you look closely, we have this screw here, and this is going to be the locking screw that's going to lock the latch that holds that CPU into place. So in order to get this CPU out, which right now it's not going anywhere, I need to just turn this screw ever so slightly. It's very, very light force on this. Again, minimal effort, just like we saw before in another video. I can just put my flathead screwdriver in there and turn ever so slightly, and you see how it releases from the CPU, how it moves back. And now, I can pick up that CPU from the laptop, and there it is. So we can take this CPU out, we can either clean it up and put it back in, or we can replace it with a new one. When you have your new CPU or your cleaned off CPU and you're ready to do your install, we'll take that CPU and we'll drop it into the slot. And once it's dropped into that slot, again, we're not gonna push it in. We're gonna take that screw at the top, which is that locking screw, and as we turn that locking screw, you can watch that CPU lock into place. There we go. So that CPU is now locked into place. We don't want to put the heat sink in just yet. What we'd like to do is take a little bit of our thermal paste, and you'll follow the manual for your laptop for this, and we'll put a dot of thermal paste right in the middle of that CPU. There we go. Commonly the size of a P. It's a little messy. You can always clean it off. Now, 
with it put on correctly, what we can do is take our heat sink, and our heat sink needs to sit exactly on top of that CPU. So let's zoom out and install that heat sink again. As we go to install the heat sink, it's got to align it properly. And once that heat sink is set up into place, we can go ahead and take our fan, and we put that CPU fan, which has been cleaned. It's nice and no longer covered in dust. You can put that back in, or if you're replacing the CPU fan, you drop a new CPU fan in, and ours just locks into place. So we'll put that power back in for our CPU fan so we don't forget. We push that little power cable back into the socket on the motherboard. And now we need to screw both the CPU fan and our heatsink back into place. So I'll take my Torx screwdriver, and we can go ahead and do that fan, lock that fan in. With the fan into place, we can then follow the order of our screws, which are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we'll put them in, in that order. We've successfully installed our new or upgraded CPU, as well as our heat sink, as well as our CPU fan. Our system should be ready to go for us to put it back together or to continue replacing and modifying our parts. Keep practicing, take your time, and make sure you consult your laptop manual for your specific instructions for your device. Thanks for watching.